everybody and thank you for tuning in today at the Sizzix studio it is a school day and what I mean by that is I'm going to be teaching you three really easy really nice techniques to enhance your crafting uh, we're going to be using these new Tim Holtz chapter 3 dies they're office kind of retro postal themed which is going to work really brilliantly with these techniques so uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's jump in so our first technique is all about aging the cardstock or the paper, whatever you're using at the time. Now I'm gonna start with a sheet of ivory cardstock. Now you can use a uh, white cardstock, you're gonna get a similar effect, but for kind of aged paper, with these being kind of retro themed dyes, you can even see in some of this imagery, it's been, it's been aged using some distressing techniques. Um, Ivory is the way to go because we're going to be able to kind of, we've already got a base there. So let's jump right in. I'm going to be using a smooching technique. Now I only call it a smooching technique uh, because that's what Pete calls it. So I hope that is what it's called and he hasn't been having me on. Um, but he's been calling it that for years. I would just call it kind of dabbing. We're gonna come in with some uh, old paper Ranger ink, which is obviously pretty apt because we're trying to make the paper look old. And we're gonna apply it straight down to the mat here. Now I want a good amount because I'm gonna give it a spritz with water. Now one of the great things about Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Inks is that when you spray it with water, especially on our media mat, you're gonna get these droplets. Now the droplets are different everywhere, uh, everywhere that I've sprayed. So we're gonna get some really intense droplets here, and then we're gonna have some big splodgy patterns here. And that's exactly what I want for a make like this. So we're gonna come in and we're just gonna tap. And I guess this is what Pete referred to when he says smooching. We're just gonna smooch should put a smooch, smooch counter for the amount of times I say smooch. Um, just like that. So you can see in all the different areas here, we've got a different kind of uh, intensity of droplets there. So that's the first color that I'm coming in with. Now next, I'm gonna wipe this away. Got a little bit of kitchen towel here. Need to use that sparingly because we haven't got too much left. And I need it. Uh, and we're gonna come in with the vintage photo here. So any kind of brown distressing will do. Vintage photo is my favorite because it, you know, it's a bit warmer. But there we go. Straight down on the mat. I'm gonna spritz it with the water. And do you know what? This side, I'm just gonna spray it a bit so the droplets are really intense. This side, I'm gonna give it a really good spray so they're big because I want a bit of variation across this make and have a look at this. And with these colors mixing together, that is fabulous. Now I'm gonna dip that bit in there. How cool is that? Now, I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna leave it to dry. Well, I'm not gonna leave it to dry. I'm gonna use my uh, heat tool. But before I do that, I'm just gonna wipe this away to make room for it. But, if, you, uh, if you're not trying to kind of save time like me, you can just leave it to dry as well. You're gonna get uh, maybe a slightly different effect. But with the heat tool, my advice would be, use the lower setting on the heat tool to dry it, but also dry the other side, because when I dry it like that, you can see it curls around that way. And when I dry it on this side, you can see it curls around the other way. I'm gonna increase the power on the heat tool for the rest of this because it's nearly dry and that means that the watery elements aren't running around the cardstock we're still going to get those lovely droplets and we'll just make sure this is completely dry before i die cut it now any part that's not dry now i'm going to dab off with a paper towel and what that'll do is any bits that aren't dry, it's gonna pull them away from the cardstock so you will end up with um, bits of kind of clean ivory cardstock underneath. Now we're not finished there. What I'm going to do, I'm just gonna dry it a little bit more and then we're gonna die cut it. And 
And there we go. So this is ready to die cut now. And we won't even be finished then. Now I'm using the big folder element from Specimen. Now all the, these three dies, they are perfect to work together. And the reason is they're all the same theme. They're that kind of retro office postal theme that I think is great, you know, for any make, but also for creative play. Because as a child, I would, I would have given anything for a set like this for kind of miniature office supplies. Um, and if that made me a boring child, then I was a boring child, but I had lots of fun and I would have done anything for a set like this. But just look how these fold over. Now they've got the, the crease lines in them so I can fold that over on itself. And that's gonna be a perfect folder with a tab there. Now this is not finished, of course, because I still wanna age it further. Now aged card has a certain property in that it kind of weathers around the edges first. So we're gonna come in with some vintage photo, take a lot of it out on to my media mat. Now that's an important lesson to learn there because we don't wanna come in with this intense color. That's a great thing about, about the media mat is that we can get most of the ink out of this um, sponge head here so that we can be very subtle as we come in here. Now, have a look at this. This is just me, just inking the corners and already you can start to see that that's looking fantastic. Now you can do this, it's not just kind of retro office theme, you can do this if you're, maybe you're into D&D, &D, you could be making uh, old scrolls. Um, my brother actually is, uh, he's into LARPing and he's, he's asked me in the past to kind of age some of the sort of scrolls and things they use. I think it's really cool. But there we go, just aging that side. I can do this on the other side, but just, I don't need to go mad because I'm just showing you guys how to do it so that you can do it at home. And then especially if you've got this die set, I would absolutely love to see what you come up with or just if you're using any of these techniques. So remember, if you are enjoying the video, maybe think about subscribing and also comment in the video. Show us pictures of your makes because I love to see that sort of thing. And have a look at that. And also make sure Stick around to the end because I am gonna show you something that I've made using all of the lessons that I'm um, showing you today. And I've used them all together in one big make. So, so we'll have a look at that. But that is cool. So that's the folder element there from Specimen. Um, okay, and that is the first technique. On to the next. Back up. Okay, on to the next technique. If I'm slightly out of breath, is definitely not because I forgot my artist sponge and had to run back upstairs to get it. So, on to the next technique. Uh, we are gonna do a paint dragging technique now, and this is a kind of mixed media technique that I absolutely love. So I would use it in any make, but especially in a Tim Holtz make. make. Uh, so, let's add one and just some small blobs of different color creamy acrylic. So just added some lemoncello, a bit of green tea, and some Arctic Sky. Now you can do this with any colors really, but I'm just choosing my favorites to get, to give me the best effect that appeals to me. And that's what mixed media is all about. Do what you think is appealing. So here you can see, well, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna move that round in the light. I've created a faux emboss. Now, a faux emboss just means that you've used the same tone of cardstock as you have your die cut elements and then stuck them down and it's going to look like an embossed piece of card there. Um, so there's another little lesson in itself, faux emboss, and you can do this with most die sets. I really love this technique. 
Um, so we, as I said, we're going to create a paint drag technique. But first, I thought I'd mention that the elements on here, these are from different sets of the three sets that I'm using today. So we have collector. Uh, we have postal and we have specimen. Um, so this here is specimen. This one here is postal. And this one is collector. Now you can see why I'm using these three sets together. And that's because they are so cohesive. And what I mean by that is you can use them all together in conjunction with one another. You know, it's almost like three, it's, it's like one big set that you can buy in three parts. I love these together. These, they're all kind of retro postal office themed, and they've got all those lovely cool little elements that just work really well together. So that's why I'm using these three. Um, and that's why I've stuck loads of these elements down here, and they work so well as a faux emboss too. Now, onto the technique, I've just sprayed my artist sponge, it's just a sea sponge here. Um, and then I've just kind of squeezed a little bit out of it because I don't want it really kind of soaking wet. I just want it very, very slightly damp. Now I'm gonna come in with the different colors now. I'm gonna do it one by one. So just dabbing a bit onto there, maybe dab a little bit off onto my media mat. And then as it is a paint drag, so let's drag. And have a look at this. Now that that's just one drag that I've done down there, but you can see how it started to pick up those raised elements from that faux emboss. So let's keep going with this color. There we are. And as long as you go in in a straight line, that's what this is about. It's just patience. Just go in a straight line and keep picking up those details here. You can come in with some different colors there. And just especially these colors, these just work so well together. There we are, because it leaves areas of the black cardstock as well, which is, which is perfect. There we are. And I think that is pretty much perfect. Uh, sorry, pretty much perfect, not pretty, pretty. Uh, there we go. But I'm not finished there because I think one thing to just to, to finish this off um, is to add some luster wax just to highlight it that tiny bit further. So let's do that. Now, when I'm teaching people how to use luster wax, this is the one thing I always say. Be patient, add a little bit at a time because you can always add more but you can't take it away. There we go. So what I'm doing, I'm getting a bit of, I'm coming in with the rose gold luster wax. I'm putting it onto my cardstock and I'm getting most of it, the majority off my finger. And then I'm gonna come in with what else is left on my finger. So I'm not just getting a big blob straight from there and straight onto here, because that will just ruin the technique. So you get most of it off, make sure it's even on your finger and then and then start to apply. Now it's very subtle at the minute. It's hard to see what's happening, but I can see that it's starting to, on, on the edges of all these elements, I'm just starting to pick up that nice rose gold sheen, but that's gonna be enhanced each time as we come in with a, a different color of lost to wax. So we'll go next with the gold. So we're getting a bit brighter now, same idea. I'm not gonna come in with just a massive amount of gold and just put a big splodge onto the card. We're gonna do it like this. And then finally, this is where you see it really change, is when you come in with that silver luster wax and you see it really start to highlight areas. And you can still see some of that rose gold and some of the gold shining through there. But have a look at this. And if I move this round in the light, you might be able to pick up that shine there. So that's brilliant. 
And that was uh, the second technique. On to the next one. Okay, and on to our final technique that I'm here to teach you. Now, I'm gonna use those same three paint colors like this. And this is a dry brushing technique. Now, it might seem simple to do a dry brushing technique, but again, it's very similar. Uh, the principles are similar to the luster wax. It's less is more to begin with. Keep building it up and you know, just don't go mad with it. So I'm gonna come in with my, whichever color I'm looking at here that I think is the darkest, which in, in this case, I mean, these are the creamy acrylics, so they're all really lovely and, and bright, but I think that that green color there, which is uh, green tea, uh, it, it is the darkest in this case. And what I'm doing here is I'm getting most of it off my brush. And then again, it's just being patient, coming in, going in the same direction, and just kind of swiping over these bits until you start to see them highlight themselves. So here you can go in different directions, you can go back and forth. Now this is just the start but you can already see how we've started to enhance all of those uh, small embellishments that come. This is a mixture of embellishments from these different sets here, and you can already see how well they go together. I've got that re registered there, which is actually, they're the die cut pieces from uh, a little tag element, so you're getting those for free. So just finishing off, my green. Now I'm gonna come in with the next brightest color, which is of course the Arctic sky. And you can mix these together to make some really nice colors. So here we've got just a bluey green here. And in areas, I'm gonna make sure that everything's highlighted. So because we created that faux emboss um, at the beginning of the video, all these bits that were stuck down, it's tone on tone, we're gonna to start to highlight them with these techniques. There we are, and that is just using the rest of the Arctic sky. And I don't even need to wash my brush here because it's such a small amount on there that it dries so quickly. Now we're gonna come in with the brightest. So remember, you're gonna start with the, the darkest color, you're gonna move up every time uh, to a brighter color. And remember to be subtle. So don't come in, don't get a big blob on your brush and come in expecting it to create this lovely technique here. We want most of the paint, most of it, off the brush. And if you find you haven't put enough on, you can just put a bit more paint on, but you can't take the paint off the elements. And there we go. A fantastic dry brush technique. Now this, this is a technique that looks very impressive to me, but you can just see how easy it is. As long as you go from dark to light, just quick brushes here, don't put too much on your brush. You can't really go wrong with this technique. So finally, what I thought would be a good idea, I'll just clear this up and I'm gonna bring out a make where I've used all of these techniques and all of these dyes together. So uh, as promised, I've got my make just under the table here. I'm gonna bring it out, do this big reveal. I'm really proud of this make. I, I really like it and it's just been so easy and fun to create using these dyes. I thought quickly we'd, we'd go over just the two um, elements that I've created here. This one was with the paint dragging technique. Remember that we, we wet the sponge, so I guess the things to remember, wet the sponge, not too much though, and then just have fun with it, drag in one direction, um, and you end up with something like this, and then we're gonna apply the luster wax afterwards. And Sizzix luster wax is great because it comes in those three different colors, gold, silver, rose gold, where you can have different kind of effects in different places. So that was the first one. Then we had that 
uh, dry brushing technique here. All we need to remember with that is just keep the, a tiny bit of paint on your brush and brush in one direction and always start, always go in one direction and start with the darkest paint and move on to the lighter ones as we go. So the big reveal, have a look at this. So I've created this uh, scrapbook just using elements from collector, from specimen and from postal here. So all of these together, you can see here, we've got my gilding wax technique on this bit. And to, to put these in, all I've done is hole punched here and just pushed these bits in so we can add that to this ring that was already there. And they work really well. There we can see my paint dragon technique and then uh, nothing underneath those. But here you've got that aging the card, uh, which was a really fun and really cool technique a bit of stamping over there and also you know a few other elements from various other um, Tim Holtz companies you, you know uh, we, we've got some Ranger stamps we've got some ideology um, tiny findings like these arrows and things and these all work together with these sets as well because they're designed to um, and that's it we just had so much fun putting this together, building it up. You know, when you make something like this, using these techniques, you get two things out of it. One is the process where you're creating, it's so much fun, it's therapy. Um, and then afterwards, you've got this stunningly beautiful little scrapbook thing that you can keep your memories in. Um, obviously, I've just chosen these generic photos here, but you could put photos of your loved ones inside. So I really hope that you found these lessons uh, helpful. I hope you found them interesting. I hope even if there was one thing that you didn't know before, this has been worth it for you to have watched the video because um, it's all about just enhancing your crafting abilities. Um, so uh, again, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, uh, make sure you subs subscribe. Let's try that again. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe uh, and leave us a comment as well. We love to know what you think of our makes uh, and we love to see what you've made at home as well. So um, thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.